All right, so welcome back everybody. So for this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to set up the game of Near and Far. Because there's a lot of stuff to set up for the game. So I'm gonna show you guys how to set this game up. So let's get started. So first of all, I'm gonna start off with this uh, town board here. And we're gonna set up this town board. So one of the things you'll do is you'll notice up here, this has got a flame. This is our reputation track. So depending on who you've decided to pick for your players, you'll find the corresponding tile that looks like these, and you'll put them in the middle, like so, because that's where everyone starts, is in the middle of that board. Then another thing you're going to do is you're also going to take the standees of the corresponding character, and you'll just go ahead and put them on this board. The reason why you can just put them wherever you want on the board, sort of like where they are now, is because the very first action you have to take is you have to take one of these actions here on this town board. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, or uh, this one here. You have to do at least one of them. So I'm just putting them there to make sure that I remember that I have to do at least one of these before I can start my adventure. Then you'll notice we have five locations here, five slots. Um, this is where we're going to put our adventurers. And so we have this... Uh, handy little, uh, this little bag here that will have all of the adventurers in it that we'll, you'll be playing with. There are five animals that you will not add to this bag, okay? There's, uh, there's four animals that are either a dog or a cat or a dingo and a cat, and then there's one that's a platypus. You don't add those to the bag, just the regular adventurers. And then you will randomly take out five adventurers from this bag. And then you'll place them like so on the board. Okay? Just like this. Okay? And then whenever you uh, take an adventurer, when you take the action from the saloon and take an adventurer, then you'll take another one from the bag and add it to the equation. Okay? Now this is a little different from above and below because in above, above and below you don't have a bag for one thing. But... Uh, you also have a cost here that you can purchase them as well. But unlike an above and below, they're not, their their costs are their own. They each have their own cost. And in above and below, there's like a spot on the board that tells you, depending on which slot it is in, is how much it costs. So that's different from above and below. Uh, so yes, that's what you'll do for that. Then you'll take these uh, treasure cards here. You'll shuffle them and you'll put them at this location here. Then, if you're playing a two-player game, which I'm setting up for, you'll grab another standee, okay? And then this standee will go here on the town hall location, the town hall action area. And it will stay there for the rest of the game. There's some, there's some definite significance of why that's going there. But yes, that's going to go there. And then the other thing we need for the board, before this part of the board is finished... Uh, is we will put these pack birds on it, uh, pack birds on it, or echidnas, if you will, or uh, I mean kiwis. Sorry, I don't know why I say echidnas, kiwis. So, um, and you'll put them here. Now, if you're playing with the advanced board, which I am not, then there's actually two spots, and you can have tortoises for sale and pack birds for sale at the same time. But if you're not playing with the advanced rules or the advanced board, then you'll just Put the pack birds and you'll put three per player so if you've got two players then it's six okay the reason why that is is because you can't have more than three anyways per player so you're limited to how many per you can purchase but you possibly might be buying more depending on if something happens to this poor little bird during the course of the game so yes that's where you're going to put them and that's it for that part of the setup so then we'll Move this aside, and then we will grab the um, the map. So we're we're setting up for campaign mode, and in campaign mode, you can play. You'll play a particular map. Start off with, and you might even play more than one in the same in the same game. But if it's your first time playing, then it's recommended that you play Glogo Caverns. Okay, so that's what I'm setting up for. I'm setting up for Glogo Caverns. Okay, 
because that's the first adventure. Just to kind of give you the feel for the game, this is the one they recommend because it's not part of the normal campaign mode. It's separate from everything else. Um, anyways, so we're going to set that up. Then what you're going to do is you're going to grab storybooks. All right, you're going to grab three storybooks per player. So if you're playing a two-player game, that would be six, but then you also add one additional one. So that means in a two-player game, you will play with seven of these storybooks. That means if you're playing with more players, then you'll play with more of these storybooks in a single game. Now, the reason why that's significant is if you are playing a two-player game, you will not be able to play all of the different stories or the encounters, if you will, that you'll encounter here. Each one of these areas that has a letter, A to... Uh, I don't know what the last letter is, but there's an L here, there's an A here, this is a B, uh, this is an E. Um, anyways, all of these letters is basically a story, an encounter, if you will, all right? And you won't play with every single one. You'll actually randomly place these storybooks on the board at random locations or just in spots you think look interesting on the map like i'm picking this one because it looks interesting because of this thing in the in the little ponds there you know but uh, yeah you'll just simply place them in spots random spots on the board that means that if it's your first adventure and you're playing only two players you could easily play this same first adventure and have a completely different adventure because you didn't place them down at every single location that was the same as last time most likely not or you might simply choose areas for sure that you didn't do last time that's also a distinct possibility as well so that's what you'll do so we got one two three four five and uh, here's the sixth one i guess i'll place it up here there's one even up there the very top for instance um so let's see one two three four five six seven so there's a seven up seven placed out for instance um let's see here that one's a little close let's put it up here or um yes right there is cool and then um we'll put this one here in the corner okay that's a little bit random there we go so that's kind of what you'll do and that's all pretty much all you'll do for that part of the setup is just placing out these storybooks at random locations. So this is the only areas that will have the uh, special encounters. So that's not all you'll do for the setup. You'll also need these uh, world cards here. And there's all sorts of uh, different cards here. And you don't need to shuffle these cards at all because... You'll get these depending on what you do in basically in um, your story. You'll encounter them in stories, and in the story it'll tell you as a reward to basically draw a card, a particular card from here. So then you can just look through here and find it. So we'll just set those aside, sort of up here, for instance. Uh, there's not really a place for them, so just somewhere near the board uh, where you can reach, right? Okay, so that's another thing. Um, then there is, where'd they go? Then we have our player boards as well. So I'll go ahead and, uh, put this on the table and there's barely enough room. I'm going to have to, uh, zoom in on this so you guys can see better. So with this board, you're going to need to put down a tent of your color on each one of these locations, okay? So like I was saying, you'll place out all of these camps on the player board, all of them, until they're covering every single one of these tent spots, okay? So that's another thing you'll do in the setup. Another thing you'll do in the setup is every player will start with three coins, so you'll just put them here at this location. Uh, another thing you're going to do is... Um, you're going to, uh, these cards here, these artifact cards, every player is going to get, I mean, you're going to draw out five of these artifact cards for every player, okay? And then you'll draw out two of these advanced artifact cards for every player, okay? Um, but then the way the, the way the setup works is 
you don't get these five cards. You get to look at these five cards and then decide which one to keep. And then you pass these on to the next player. Okay. These, likewise with these, you will, you know, get to decide which one you want to keep. You pass it on to the next player. Well, actually not these. These you just, these you'll just hold on to. But these you're going to pass on to each player until every person has five of these regular artifact cards. Okay. So you get to look at all of the cards and kind of pick your, your favorites out of all of the cards that are in the game. But you're still going to get five. And then, then at this moment, after you've picked your five uh, artifact cards and you get your two advanced artifact cards, you must discard one of these cards. Okay, so you only start off with one of these. And then if you want to, you can discard any number of these. You can discard all of them if you want. You can discard one, you can discard two, three, it doesn't matter. And the reason why you might want to discard some of these cards here is um, they have requirements. So when you play them, they, they will stay in your hand and they're worth victory points or journey points. So these are journey points, which are basically victory points. So they're worth victory points, basically. So you want to play them so you can get victory points, but they have a cost. You have to pay these costs and some of these costs can be hard, kind of hard to get. So... These banner, these uh, banner tokens, the, which show these banners here, you have to pay off a banner token of this kind, this blue banner, three gems. And you also have to have minus three uh, reputation just to get this card, for instance. This one you have to pay a coin, two gems, but you have to have at least three reputation to get this uh, basically played. Okay, then afterwards you can have less reputation than this. It doesn't matter. But you have to have this much at least in order to play this card as well as pay these resources to play this card. So some of these cards are going to be really hard to play while others not so much. And so you're going to be looking at these in the beginning of the game and deciding which one of these you want to discard because you might not get to play them all. And if you don't play them all, then you get deducted a journey point for every one of these cards you don't play. So you definitely want to decide ahead of time if you can. Now, if you don't, still don't end up using some of these, there is a way to discard them during the game. And we'll get to that later. But yes, that's what you're going to do. And then you'll just stick these cards nearby because, because you, can get, you can get these cards later in the game. So you can get even more of these artifact cards in the game. So you'll just stick them nearby. Okay, um, another thing everyone's going to start with is they're going to start with a one of these types of cards here that uh, you can actually write on and s for certain things that you might encounter when you do a special, um, when you're doing the campaign mode and you uh, have a successful quest, you'll, uh, you'll mark one of these little squares in. Once they're all marked in, then you'll mark in this square, uh, this, tr uh, this star here. And these are skill points. So as you play the game and you, and you fill in stars, you can spend skill points to basically learn a skill that only this character is going to have because this is a campaign mode. So you're going to play campaign. You're going to play a story, a map after map after map after map until you get to the last one because it is a campaign. So that's what that's for. Then if you do certain a certain uh, encounter quests and you have some of them will actually give you side quests that you can do. So you'll write them down here so that way you can complete them. Uh, you can write down your talents down on this card, maybe what they do and what they're called. Uh, you'll put your journey, po journey points here. So at the end of a game, when you're done with the game for the day, you'll count up all your journey points and you'll put them um, here on each of these squares until you get, basically, until you get this completely filled, um, until you've basically gone to every single map in the game. And then... These are keywords you will put down if you get a keyword for a quest. Uh, when you do a certain encounter, sometimes you get keywords you get as a reward. But yes, basically, that's what this card is for. And there's more than one of these for each character. So even if you write on with pen, you will still have other, other cards of these you can use. But that's something else that you'll kind of have near your player board. You'll also have that. And then every player will start with... One of, uh, with an animal companion. They can either start with this dingo-like dog, or they can start with this cat. They do the same thing. There's nothing in difference. There's no difference. They each provide you a skill. 
They each provide you a search. They each provide you two hearts. Okay, so it doesn't matter what you do. So just go for, go with your favorite. If you like dogs, go with dogs. If you like cats, go with cats. And then you put them here on one of these four banners. It doesn't matter where you put them because you can move them during the course of the game. As you get adventurers, they will go in these locations here and then you'll just kind of slide this around to make room, okay? And then at some point, you might actually not have the animal in your active active party. So any member who isn't in an active party will just be set off of your board, but nearby, so that later you can always add them to your active party later on. But that's basically what you're gonna do there. If you get a pack bird, it's gonna go here. If you get a treasure card, it's gonna go here. But you can't have any treasure cards unless you have a pack bird here. So you have to get the pack bird, then you can get a treasure card, then you can have, you can get a pack bird, then you can get a treasure card. And that means you can only have three max treasure cards because you can only have three pack birds. So that's what all that means. Then there's also a little, uh, another token that you will be using quite a bit. This token here will determine how many hearts you have. You need hearts for lots of things in this game. So depending on how many hearts you have, you'll put the you'll put this little thing down on the spot you have. Currently, I would have two because my dog provides me two hearts. So technically, this is how much I would have. But technically, you leave it on zero until you go on to your adventure. When you claim you're going to start your adventure, then you count up all the hearts you have in total, and then you get to add, you know, how many hearts you have. You can never have more than 13 hearts, though. So that's the limit. But yeah, that's what that's for, for setup. Uh, then there's some dice you can set nearby. In this game, you might be dueling another player, so you might be rolling the dice at, at the same time as somebody else, and so that's why there's more than one dice. But generally, you'll only be rolling a dice uh, per player, one per player anyway. Uh, so there's that. Um, yeah, I think that's it for mostly for the setup. There is one more thing I want to mention that I forgot to mention for the, uh, for the story, for this, for this area here. You will also get threat cards. As you go about your, your adventure on this map, you'll encounter threats. And so these threat cards here, they're going to start with the lowest the lowest, or should I say the weakest attacker, the weakest threat to the strongest, okay? And you'll put these threats at this location here, okay? That's where they go. But pretty much that's everything you need to know in order to set up near and far. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys watch my how to play video.